Shadow is on the air in a new series of thrilling adventures. Brought to you each week by the Blue Coal Dealers of America. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. In just a moment, we'll listen to the Oracle of Death. But first, here's an interesting fact. Do you know that the Blue Coal Way is the easy way to heat your home and save money, too? You see, Blue Coal is America's finest anthracite, specially prepared to make home heating easy. Blue Coal gives you better heat with less attention. Besides, when you order Blue Coal, you get extra home heating service, free advice on how to cut down the cost of heating your home. For money-saving Blue Coal and free heating service, phone your friendly Blue Coal dealer tomorrow. Shadow, the serious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. As the Shadow, Cranston is gifted with hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible Shadow belongs. Today's story, The Oracle of Death. <laughs> Hey, we dismissed it. Shrevy, you should know better than to speed around corners in this cab when we have the police commissioner with us. <laughs> but, Mr. Cranston, that is just why I'm speeding, that's why. <laughs> Get it, hey? There, now, you see, Commissioner Wilson, we really had you with us just to fix tickets. Yes, yes, and if I didn't feel so darn good-natured after that, um, excuse me, after that dinner you folks fed me, I'd resent it very much, Miss Lane. <laughs> dinner be done, Commissioner. Can't we persuade you to change your mind and come along to the theater with us? No, no, I'm sorry, Cranston. I've got to get back to headquarters. Oh, now, Commissioner, please. Oh. No. Pretty please? Not even with sugar on it. I have to be on the job. We've been taking quite a beating lately. It's been a series of petty crimes all over the city. When our percentage of arrests is too small to please the mayor's committee, I'm always the first target. They're hard on you, aren't they? Yes. Like some of the so-called first citizens of our city, they want to clean everybody's house but their own. You know, you fall into that category, too, Cranston. I do? Well, how? Well, that new servant you hired, Rodney. An ex-con just out of prison. You know nothing about him. Yet you'd kick like a steer if you came home some night and found the place cleaned out. Oh, Commissioner, Rodney would never do that. How do you know? Well, because Rodney's perfectly harmless. Besides, I know for a fact that he was falsely convicted of the crime that he went to jail for. Oh, you do, do you? Yes. Who told you? Why, Rodney. Well, now, that's... uh, Well, he told you... Of all... Uh, Rodney told her. Hey, hey, stop this cab. You're passing headquarters. Okay, okay. Headquarters make me nervous, they make me. <laughs> He's a real fine, that hack driver. He is. He is a real fine. Well, thanks for the dinner. And look, Cranston, get rid of that servant, will you? <laughs> Commissioner, I'll have to report you to the mayor's committee. You bet. Oh, good night. <laughs> okay, let's go, Shirley. What if we go in a twinkle of an eye in a twinkle? Come on, you shouldn't tease poor Commissioner Weston like that. <laughs> you shouldn't tease him. Why, way down deep, Margo. He loves to be. Leave me alone! Oh. Hey, did you see that boob step right in front of my hat? We hit him, Lamont. We hit that man. He walked right in front of the cab. Come on, Shrevey. Yeah, I couldn't help it, Mr. Cranston. You saw what happened. I know, I know. I saw it. Well, you didn't run over him. That's one good thing. Yeah, I couldn't help it, Mr. Cranston. I didn't. I know you couldn't, Shrevey. Oh, wait a minute. He's been knocked unconscious. Come on, give me a hand. We'll get him medical attention at once. <laughs> His eyes are open. The doctor must have brought him around. Yes. Let's see if we can learn who he is, where he lives. Hello there. You feeling better? Huh? What happened? Where am I? Oh, take it easy, old man. You're all right. I'm all right, am I? Who are you? Well, I'm Lamont Cranston. I took you here to my apartment right after the accident. Accident? What accident? Don't you remember being hit by the cab Mr. Cranston and I were riding in? Hit by a cab? I don't remember nothing like that. Now, well, look, buddy. How long have I been in this joint of yours? About 24 hours. 24 hours? How do you like that? That makes today Monday. And I had an important date, Sunday, last night. Now, take it easy, my friend. This is not Monday. It's Sunday. What? Sunday? <laughs> You're crazy. This is Monday. No, truly, today is Sunday. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who got hit on the head, me or you? 
I know that yesterday was Sunday, and I can prove it by the newspaper extra they were selling on the street before I was hit. What was the extra? Think about that young society dame that got murdered. So what young society dame? All right, all right. Play dead dog. So I'm talking about Ann Clay, the one who was pushed off a penthouse balcony and fell to her death. You must admit, Lamar, our friend has quite an imagination. Yes. I'm sorry, old man, but Ann Clay is very much alive. We saw at dinner just about an hour ago. Look, mister, let's stop fooling. Ann Clay was killed last night. <laughs> foretold the future. Yes. Yes, there's no denying that. I've never heard of anything like it. If you'll pardon me, sir. Oh, oh yes, sir. Yes, Rodney. It's dangerous, sir. Dangerous having someone like that, that man around. Are you afraid of him, Rodney? Oh, frankly, Miss Lane, I am. That supernatural power he seems to have can lead to, well, to anything. I wouldn't let it worry you, Rodney. Come on, Margot. I want to go in and have another talk with our psychic wonder. He's still dangerous to have around. I know he is. Don't worry, Rodney. Yeah, remind me not to worry, too, will you? Hello there. Hello. Feel any better? Yeah, yeah. Now, look. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, what is your name? Bud. Just Bud? Just Bud. Mm-hmm. Well, look, Bud. Something quite extraordinary has happened that I feel you should know. First, you've got to believe me when I tell you that we were telling the truth. When we told you that last night was Sunday, not Monday. What about it? Just this. You told us about the death of young Anne Clay before it actually happened. So? Well, how do you account for it, Spud? What do you think made you do it? I don't know. Well, have you always done this? Have you always been able to foretell the future? Do you think I'd have looked like I did when you found me if I could, lady? Then what caused this thing? Now, look. I know you think I'm nuts. But that makes us even, because I think you're nuts. Now, tell me, wise man, what day do you think this is? Well, Monday, of course. Yeah, Monday. Hmm. Well, I say it's Tuesday. Uh-oh. Here we go again, Lamont. Well, look, can, can you prove it, Bob? Sure. Yesterday, that's Monday, according to me, at three minutes past six at night, the Continental Bank was knocked over. Lamont, do you think that's another prediction? I don't know. Well, let me see it's five minutes past six now. Well, just to be on the safe side, I'll call Commissioner Weston and pass the word along. Still don't believe me, huh? No, I haven't said I don't believe you, Spud. But uh, you'll forgive us if we do hope you're wrong. You can understand that. I'll tell you this much, Spud. If you think... Police headquarters. Uh, hello, uh, Commissioner Weston, please. Who's calling him? Lamont Cranston. Yes, sir. There's one more. Go ahead. Hello, Commissioner. Yes? Uh, this is Lamont Cranston. What's on your mind, Cranston? Look, now, I, uh, I don't want you to think I'm crazy. And please don't ask me where I received my information. But I have reason to believe that the Continental Bank will soon be robbed. So get some men over there quickly. Cranston, you're a very smart guy. The Continental was robbed five minutes ago. All right, come on in, Margot. Come on in. Well, you needn't be sure it was me, Lamont. You did your best to prevent the Continental Bank robbery. And I succeeded in... Thank you, Mr. Cranston. Oh, yes, Rodney. Oh, Mr. Cranston, while you were gone, that man, Spud, he disappeared. Disappeared? He got away. And what happened? Well, just after you and Miss Lane went out, he called for his clothes. When I wouldn't give them to him, he he took one of your suits. Oh, didn't you try to stop him? Yes, yes, I did, but he overpowered me and left. Where did he go? Well, I saw him take a cab in front of the door, and when the driver returned, I learned the address he was taken to. I jotted it down on this piece of paper, sir. Good work, Rodney. Hmm. 160 South Street. The lower end of town. Oh, I did my best to keep him here, sir. Yes. I can tell that by the condition of your left eye. He landed a lucky right hand. I wasn't looking, sir. Oh. Margo, we've got to locate this man at once. Why, Lamont? I've done a great deal of thinking about those psychic powers of his. And I've come to the conclusion that this whole thing has been a gigantic hoax. What do you mean? I believe that our friend Spud has been acting as a tool for a devilishly clever crime ring. You mean his predictions were all planned, sir? Yes, Rodney. Planned in advance. That's how he was able to foretell the future. Come along, Margot. We're going to this South Street address. See you later, Rodney. Yes, sir, but do be careful, sir. Don't you think you ought to tell Commissioner Weston all about it first? 
No, Margot. My visit to our friend Spud is a job for the shadow. even happened. And they come out true. How were you able to predict the future? Answer me, Spud. No. No. I insist that you tell me. Why don't you tell me why I can't see you? And maybe I'll tip my hand, too. I've already explained that. Yeah? I have reason to believe, Spud, that all your predictions of the future were carefully planned. That you knew they were going to happen. <laughs> I see. Then if you're that smart, Shadow, why don't you tell me what I'm going to predict next? I'd rather let you tell me. Okay. Okay, I will. You heard me speak of this guy, Lamont Cranston? Yes. Well, he's dead. Dead? Yeah. Cranston got killed last night at 8 o'clock. <laughs> predictions in just a moment. Now, are you getting off to the right kind of a start this heating season? Are you going to heat your home comfortably and economically this year? Well, here's how you can be sure. Fill your bin with blue coal, the fuel that's tinted and trademarked an unmistakable blue color to assure you of getting America's finest anthracite. Thousands of personal experiences prove conclusively that blue coal gives greater heating comfort at less cost. More steady, more even, more dependable heat. That's what you get when you burn blue coal. And that's not all. You also enjoy the friendly service and cooperation of your neighborhood blue coal dealer. For you see, your blue coal dealer doesn't stop at just delivering your order, not at all. He takes a personal interest in your heating problems and gives you helpful advice that saves time and money. For instance, he'll demonstrate the proper way to operate furnace dampers. He'll point out to you the time and money-saving advantages of a blue coal automatic heat regulator. In short, he'll prove to you that the blue coal way is really the easy way to heat your home. Give your friendly blue coal dealer a call tomorrow. His name is listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the words blue coal. Now, back to the Oracle of Death. Mr. Cranston, here we are at your apartment. Here we are. Mm -hmm. My apartment? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, fine, Frieda. Yeah, and I must say so, if you will pardon me, for a man who was on the Gabby side, usually, you've been very on Gabby all the way home. Is it trouble at following you, is it, hey? Is it tr trouble at... Oh, no, 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 Frieda. I... I was just thinking about the appointment I have at 8 o'clock tonight. Mr. Cranston, you've got something on your mind, you have. Look, can I help you out here? No, Shrevey, I'll take care of this myself. But in case anything should go wrong, I want you to wait outside the building and watch everyone who enters and leaves. Like a hawk, I will. Like a hawk. Hawk, sure, that's me. Shrevey, if I don't come downstairs by, uh, by 10.15, you come up and get me. you were in here, Mr. Cranston, sitting in the dark. That's all right, Rodney. I'm waiting for someone. 
call at 8 o'clock. I see. Well, it's almost that now. Uh, I'll take it, Rodney. You'll excuse me, then. I have some work to finish in the pantry. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Hello? Cranston? Yes? This is Commissioner Weston. Oh, yes, Commissioner. Look here, man. I want to find out how you knew about that Continental Bank stick-up. Why? Well, because of your call telling us about it before the news broke on the street. You're suspected by the mayor's committee of having pulled the job yourself. Now, Commissioner, you don't believe that, do you? I don't know what to believe at this point. Look, Commissioner, all I can tell you is that I received my information from a man that I picked up who claimed to have psychic powers. Huh? He foretold the murder of Anne Clay, the looting of the Continental Bank. And right now, I'm waiting for the third crime that he predicted to happen. What is it this time? I'm sorry, I can't tell you. You can't? Listen, you're obstructing justice. You're interfering with the law. Good night, Commissioner. Sorry, Weston. I couldn't tell you any more. Oh, uh, Rodney, I forgot that you were still here. Yes, sir. I shan't need you any longer tonight. I'm expecting a call at eight. But uh, it's eight now. I can wait and show your guests in. I'll attend to it myself. Good night, Rodney. Well, good night, sir. Yes, good night. You're sure you're all right, Mr. Cranston? I hope so. Good night, sir. Good night, Rodney. time that our young man's prophecy didn't work as he thought. <laughs> well, I could use a good night's sleep. Yes? <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Oh. <laughs> That's for luck, Cranston. So you see, Commissioner Weston, I was frankly worried about the whole situation. And when I heard Mr. Cranston speak to you on the phone tonight, I, I felt it my duty to reveal to you just who this man who made the prophecies is. Yes, you did the right thing, Rodney. Thank you. This must be his room right here, sir. Wretched looking hobble, isn't it? Uh, Incidentally, it might be wiser not to mention that you're from the police. Not from the police? Oh, oh, sure, yes. Who's there? Come on, open up. Remember, not from the police, Commissioner. Well, I only said that... Uh, oh, oh, yes. Who are you? What do you want? It's Rodney, Mr. Cranston's butler. Don't you remember me? Oh, yeah. Who's this guy? He's a friend of mine who's interested in your case. He wants to talk to you. Okay. Come in. I suppose you're going to ask me a lot of crazy questions, too. No. I'm just very curious to learn more about this psychic power you're supposed to have. You a cop? I said I was here to ask about your psychic power. Now... I don't see nothing wonderful about it. I just don't agree with the rest of you people as to what day it is. That's all. Everyone else is a day behind me. Was that true? No, not if you're telling the truth. Sure, I'm telling the truth. I'll prove it to you. Now, what day do you say this is? Tuesday, of course. You see? And I know that it's Wednesday. Oh, because last night, Tuesday, half of this town was blown up by bombs. What? Sure, the railroad station, hotels, theaters, every place in the east side of town. You are crazy. You can decide that later. I ain't finished. They got the power plant over on the west side, too. Blow it to pieces. Killed everyone in the joint. What time did all this happen? About 10.30 last night. That's the maddest thing I've ever heard. Okay, okay. I ain't asking you to believe it. Oh, look, Mr. Weston, whatever your personal reaction may be, I must beg you to believe me. Everything else that he's foretold has happened right to the minute. This is too fantastic. But you can't lose anything by taking precautions. Suppose the power plant should blow up. Would you want to be responsible for all those deaths? No, no, of course not. And he's always been right before. You know that from the call you made to Mr. Cranston. Yes, that's true. Well, I guess I'll have to take the gamble. If this prediction doesn't come off, I'll be laughed off the force. But if it proves to be right, well, it's worth a try. What time is it now? Uh, five minutes past ten. Then I have exactly 25 minutes to evacuate that power house and send every armed man in the department to the east side to protect it from those bombings. Duffy, call the power plant and order all workers to leave the building until further notice. Yes, sir. Edwards, 
I want officers posted at every theater, hotel, and public building on the east side. Right. Cardona, post the court and the men around the railroad station. Have them pick up any and all suspicious characters they find. And hurry, man, hurry. Mr. Cranston. Mr. Cranston. Holy smoke, what's happening? Mr. Cranston, what's the matter with you? I had to bust the door in. Really? Sure, I'm glad you're here. I've been shot. Oh. Flesh wound in the shoulder. Oh, my gosh. Are you all right, are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Who done it? Where is he? I'm not sure who did it. you got to tell me. Did you see any strangers come out of the building? Oh, no, and I was watching, too, I was. I didn't even hardly pay no attention to all them police alarms that was coming over the radio. Now, what alarms? What were they about? Well, they sent a bunch of riot squads over the east side of town. Sent every cop over there. Something they was expecting to happen. And they moved everybody out of the West Side Powerhouse, too. Why did Weston do that, the fool? Shrevey, you've got to get word to the commissioner at once. Hey, something wrong, is it? Plenty. Find Weston and tell him to order his police back to the west side. And he must send a squad to the power plant, too, right away. Okay, okay. But what about you? I'll take care of myself. Go ahead now. Hurry. I'm gone. Oh, what you get men back to the west side? I'm gone. Oh, if I can stay on my feet long enough, the shadow will play a part in this thing, too. Look, Fred. Well, I've been all through the powerhouse. There ain't a soul around. You've done a good job of scaring him, Fred. Oh, well, I don't take no credit. The chief was the one who was going up the whole scheme. That's waking, waking Python. All we have to do is cut the main switch here in the power plant and boom, the town's dark. Boy, I'd have loved to see you pull off that predicting stuff. They <laughs> <laughs> must have thought you was a regular wizard, Fred. Yeah, yeah they felt pretty good. Nobody but that soap my Mark Cranston tumbled in was planted like clockwork. And he's been taken care of. You should have seen that wise guy, Police Commissioner Weston. He went for it bigger than any of the others. Well, I got everything all set to cut off the power. As soon as the chief gets here... Hey, we'll... wait a minute. Here he comes. Everything set up? Yeah, it's piping. They didn't even leave a watch. Good. I got the rest of the men posted at every worthwhile stall and money center on the west side. When we pull the switch and the lights go off, they begin working. <laughs> Isn't that a cup of the bother? No. Right. No, they're all over on the east side, waiting for the bombs that will never explode. Well, we might as well get things started. Where's that main switch? Right here, Chief. I like the honor of pulling it myself. Okay. This is it. The city goes dark. <laughs> Who knocked my hand off that switch? What do you what mean? mean? <laughs> what was that? Sorry to spoil your plans, gentlemen. Who's that talking? I don't see nobody. Sounds like he's right here beside us. I am right here beside you, gentlemen. And don't try to look for me. You won't see me. Chief, who is that? Who are you? I am known as the Shadow. The Shadow? Oh, so you've heard of me. Yeah. Yeah. That's the guy that came to call on me before. That's right, Spud. I called on you to learn more about your power to foretell the future. And I learned enough from you to know that you were planning just such a haul as this. What's he going to do to us? I don't like it, boss. Shut up, you fool. Don't let him frighten you. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah, but I can't see him. I ain't scared of somebody I can see, but... Well, I have no fear of anyone I can't see. You hear that, Shadow? Yes. A very brave statement. Especially from such a meek man as yourself, Rodney. How do you know me? I know that you're the valet of Lamont Cranston. A man whom you tried to murder just two hours ago. Oh, I see. You're pretty smart, aren't you? I'm smart enough to know that you and your gang of cutthroats murdered Anne Clay and robbed the Continental Bank. And that now you are planning to loot and terrorize the entire city. All right. What are you going to do about it? Don't worry. I've already taken care of things. Oh, is that? You hear that, gentlemen? Come on, we gotta get out of here. Come, Come on, on, let's go. See, Rodney, you didn't frighten them away after all. But you forget that I can... Take escape. your hand away from that switch, Rodney, or shall I shoot it away? You're not scaring me, Shadow. Let's get out of here, boys. Yeah, yeah, before the coppers get us. I'm afraid it's too late. Oh, wait a minute, then. We can't get out now. But the officers of the law are going to have just as tough a time getting in. I'm making a break. The first man that makes a break will get it from me. You're three against one, gentlemen. Are you going to let him tell you what to do? Shut up! You guys in there coming out quiet or what we have to smoke you? Come and get us! Okay, oh, Chief, no, come on. What's that? Hey, what's that? Well, you're being treated to tear gas, gentlemen. Kick that thing out of here! I'm touching the thing. I think that will make you all change your mind. There's the second bomb. I can't stand it! Let's give up! Come on! Going to quit, Rodney? Not until I get you first, Shadow. 
<laughs> I'm not a very easy target. Try again. Why, you, I'll get you yet. Sorry, you missed again. Well, come on, I can't breathe, please. Okay. Okay, Shadow. Come and get us. <laughs> Feel, Lamont? Oh, it's healing nicely, Margo. You'll be happy to learn, Lamont, that your man Rodney and his entire gang have been rounded up and put behind bars. Good work, Commissioner. Oh, it was nothing, really. I was wise to those birds right along. Just played with them like a cat with a mouse. And then when I was ready, I set my trap for them by purposely pretending to put all of my officers on the other side of town. <laughs> Just routine police strategy. Why, Commissioner Weston, you know that Lamont... Uh, was... Yes, Margo, he knows that I'm very proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, we mustn't forget that election, eh, Commissioner? Huh? <laughs> oh, the election. <laughs> and now it's our privilege to bring you John Barclay, America's home heating expert. Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good evening, friends. Last week, I attended the golden wedding anniversary of two of my best friends. Well, 50 years is a long time. And Jim and Amy aren't as spry as they used to be. So as an anniversary gift, I gave them a blue coal automatic heat regulator. Now I know they'll be more comfortable and a lot happier this winter... Because they won't have to keep going up and down stairs to regulate dampers. You know, folks, more and more people every day are learning about the time and money they save with blue coal and a blue coal heat regulator. And remember, when you order blue coal, you get extra home heating service. You see, folks, you get the free heating sir- advice of a John Barkley trained service man. He'll show you how to get more heat for every dollar you spend. And his free advice is only a part of the everyday service given you by your friendly blue coal dealer. So phone your neighborhood blue coal dealer first thing in the morning. Thank you. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. The characters, names, places, and plots are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Dealers of America bring you one of the most thrilling adventures the shadow has ever experienced. So be sure to listen, and be sure to phone your friendly blue coal dealer for greater heating comfort at less cost. This is Ken Roberts saying, keep the home fires burning with blue coal.